If you plan on breeding a North American species of colubrid like a rat snake or say a bull snake or a hognose snake, you've probably started to think about if and when you're going to be brewmating your breeders for the winter. So today we're going to be talking about if you should brewmate your snakes and how to do it. This is just uh, one of our rat corns. She's one of the mothers of the scaleless clutches we had earlier this year. So she is one that we are preparing for brumation right now. Now, if you have a snake that you just wanna keep as a pet and you don't plan on breeding it the following spring like we do with her, then you don't have to brumate them. You can just keep them awake the entire year, just feed them during the winter as normal. But understand that there's a chance that they might not eat as well as they usually do because of the lack of light or the longer nights basically that kind of puts them in a bit of a brumation mode that tells them i'm not supposed to be eating this time of year i'm supposed to be hibernating or brumating so if you keep them awake year round just know that they might not eat every time. The reason why we brumate snakes in preparation for the breeding season the following spring is because when you wake them all up in spring then they're all kind of in sync with one another and they're more likely to breed. I've also heard that by brumating male snakes it helps with sperm production and successful results so we brumate anything we plan on breeding the following spring. Now keep in mind that there are many different ways to brumate them and different times of the year that you can do it. Uh, this is just what we do and we found works pretty well for what, for what we breed, but this isn't going to work for like a ball python or a tropical species of snake. To prepare those species for breeding season, which they usually breed at a different time of year anyway, it's usually a bit different. It's a matter of pulling their food or changing their humidity levels. So today's video is just how to brumate our North American species. So what we do is, well, step one of what we do is we just stop feeding them. On, on October 31st or Halloween, I give them their last meal of the year and I just let them sit for about three to four weeks to clear out their systems from that previous meal. And you wanna make sure they have lots of time to clear out their systems because any leftover food inside of them that sits throughout the winter risks spoiling because they need heat in order to digest. So you want their systems to be completely empty. Now, after these three weeks are up, and we know their systems are clear, which is usually the last week of November, we uh, simply remove them from heat, basically, and we start lowering their temperature to the brumation temperature, which they will sit at through the rest of winter. This is as simple as either unplugging the rack and just removing the heat source altogether, or in our case, since we have some snakes in our racks that we want to keep warm and we don't want to brumate in the winter, we just remove their bins and sit them at room temperature. Let me show you this. I actually have a snake that's gone the three weeks, so what we're going to do is, it's this one. This is our hognose snake female who bred earlier this year and we'd like to bre breed her again the following spring. Uh, she's gone three weeks without food, and now I'm just going to simply take out the bin, slap a lid on it, and we are good for step two. Now with a lot of our snakes, we brumate them in the same bin they're kept in, just to give them a lot of room, and it's, it's easy to kind of like remove them like this, instead of transferring them to a different bin altogether. But a lot of breeders will take the snake and actually move them into a smaller bin for brumation, because they're not going to move around a whole lot during the winter, so they can be kept in something a little bit smaller. They won't mind at all. And you can keep a very basic setup, just a cave, a water dish, and that's it, honestly. That's all you need. Now, since we just take their normal bins and put those in brumation too, I'm gonna leave her leafy thing and any rocks that are in here as well, just cause it doesn't hurt to have those in there. But you don't need to have enrichment in their enclosures during brumation because they're honestly gonna be so chilly that they're just gonna sit in their cave the entire time. After removing their heat source, we pretty much move them right down to our living room to start cooling them down a bit because the temperature gets gradually cooler the lower you get in our house. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to move this bin down into our living room. All right, and at this level, you're just going to let the snake sit for another couple of days. It's a gradual slowdown over a, the span of about a week. As you can see, we have a couple other snakes that are in brumation. We have a hognose here, hognose here, a couple little fox snakes here. And I know a lot of people don't 
recommend cohabbing snakes, but when you're brumating them, since they're so chilly during the winter, they don't have any inclination to eat anyway. So you can kind of break that rule sometimes when you're brumating your snakes. During the winter, you can have several together. Usually what we do is we have same-sex pairs together of the same species, of course, that are of a similar size. That's when we break that rule and keep them together. It's really just for brumation purposes. And again, you want to keep a very simple setup, a cave, water dish, and bedding. For hog noses, we give them quite a bit of bedding so they can dig around if they want, but they don't really move a whole lot during brumation. Here and there they do, but they're much more sedentary. After it's been about a week since you started removing the uh, heat from the snake's enclosure, then you move them into their permanent brumation uh, quarters, basically. So we're going to take her down to the lowest level of our house where it stays around 58 to 60 degrees. It's a little warmer than we'd like, but I'll talk about that in a second. Let's move her downstairs. All right, we have her down in the lowest level of the house. Now I know we're moving her all in one video, but pretend this is taking place over the course of about a week. So at this point, we're going to just move her down into the brumation room, which we surrounded with this styrofoam wall of sorts, so that we can keep it as separated and dark and as cool as possible. Because we do come down here to get some things from our basement occasionally, but you want the snakes in brumation to be dark because in the wild it's it's dark when they're hibernating. So now I want to mention quick, I don't really like using this style of lid really for snakes at all, including for brumation, because snakes like to push their way out of things and this lid isn't very secure. So what I want to do is I want to eventually move all the snakes over to these. These bins are the same size and they have this lid that has six solid locks which will keep it down no matter how hard they try to escape. So eventually we're going to transition all our snakes or move them over to these. But for this year, while I'm still getting enough of these totes for everybody, what I'm going to do and what I've done in the past is we just set them here and we weigh down the lids with other snakes on top of them and we haven't had a problem with that. With larger species of snakes, however, we move them in these bins, and this is just an unheated rack that Ed built, just like the other racks we have upstairs. The only difference is there's no heat involved with it. And we just put our bigger species of snakes, like our bull snakes, uh, in these larger 60 quart tubs for brumation. It's smaller than the recommended size for a bull snake year round, but for brumation, when again, they're not gonna be moving much, these work just fine. That all being said, this is what we used to use for our bull snakes, but now for brumation, since we have awesome new racks right here, we're just going to leave them in their racks, we think, during brumation this year. And instead of moving them down to the bottom of our house, since they're already here, we're just going to turn down the temperature of their heating pads, thanks to their thermostat, we're just gonna turn it down, and eventually they'll just become unplugged at the end. And then they'll be at the 57 to 60 degrees of this room. Oh, we have one staring at us. He's not very happy because he's on week three of his no feeding portion of brumation. All these snakes are not very happy right now. All these bull snakes are gonna go into brumation and they're still on heat because I'm waiting for them to digest everything that's in their systems, but they're not getting food, so they're not very happy with me right now. And but bull snakes aren't happy when they're not fed. Yeah, they're, they've been begging. Here, look at Brad. I bet she'll be begging for food. She's probably the angriest one right now. Oh, she's over here. Oh, give me hey, food. Brad. I'm sorry. You have to go into brumation. I can't feed you. I'm sorry. Her Bye. and her. Oh, yeah, she's angry too. Where is my food? Give me the food. I think what we'll do, since these bins have a window on the front, since we do come down here occasionally, like I said, we're just going to take black paper or maybe cardboard and just cover up this window during the winter because then they'll be cool and they'll be in the dark, so they should be all sleepy during the winter months. Now they will remain like this or at about 57 degrees Fahrenheit for three months. By December 1st, we have them all down at this temperature with all the heating elements unplugged officially. And they stay at that temperature for December, January, and February. And on March 1st, we start reversing the process. We start increasing their temperatures gradually and over the span of about eh, five days or so, it's a quicker process to warm them back up. Some breeders just take the snake straight from brumation and they toss them in the rack just like any day, they plug in the heat and they're good to go. In the past, we have done the gradual increase in temperature method over the span of about, again, five days, but I think we're gonna start playing around with just 
putting them in the rack right away. Maybe not turning on heat right away, but uh, the next day or two turning heat back on to a normal temperature, and then they should be back to normal. So that's how you set up a snake for brumation. It's at least how we do it, and we found works really well with getting all the snakes into breeding mode the following spring. And we end up pairing them after their first meal out of brumation. Right after their first meal, they are ready to pair up. Some people give them a month of food before introducing them to each other, but we found the best success just putting them together right away. One exception to all of this in regards to uh, North American colubrids are with fox snakes. Fox snakes need it cold. They need it about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which this room does not get to during the winter. And I think that's why we're having issues breeding them in the spring. We just can't get them cold enough in the winter. So this year we're going to actually be buying a wine cooler so we can put them in there throughout December, January, and February. And hopefully next year they will breed for us finally. Getting a wine cooler is what a lot of breeders down south, like in Texas, have to do anyway for any of the North American species because they have to get them down to 55 degrees or 40 for fox snakes and in Texas your basements don't get that cold. We're kind of fortunate here in Wisconsin that our basement is cool enough for most of our snakes to brumate at but we will still need a wine cooler for the fox snakes I think. The one good thing about living in the frozen north. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Speaking of brumation and breeding, this is Stripey, our holdback from our very first clutch of bull snakes. And he will be breeding for the first time next year. So this is his first cycle of brumation and he's trying to figure out why he hasn't been fed in a few weeks, so he's not too happy. When your snakes are in brumation, like full on brumation mode, just check on them once a week. You can, of course, check on them more, but at least once a week. Check on them, their body condition, make sure they're not losing a ton of weight. They shouldn't, if they're healthy, lose much weight at all during brumation, but you want to check on them to be safe. Also make sure they have fresh water at all times because sometimes during brumation these guys move around and they fill up their water dish with bedding and then it soaks it all up and if they get wet and they're cold that can cause up respiratory infections. So just make sure everything is clean and dry and make sure their water is fresh. Now again, this brumation cycle that we use works best on North American colubrids, but there's even debate on if you have to brumate these guys at all. We had his dad actually, Janet, we never brumated because we needed to use him in educational programs throughout the winter. We brumated the female, but not the male, and he was able to successfully breed every year, no problem. So some snakes, it's debatable on if you actually have to brumate them or not, or how long you should do it. We do it for three months, it seems to work out well. Some people don't do it at all consensus is if you plan on breeding that snake the following spring, play it safe, you can brumate it, plus then you don't have to feed it for three months, and it'll probably be more likely to breed the following season. But if you have a snake that's just a pet and you don't plan on breeding it, then there's no need to brumate it, just keep it on heat, keep feeding it as normal throughout the entire winter. Now, as we all know, hognose snakes are known to be pretty picky eaters, and a friend of ours who works for the Minnesota DNR has actually seen baby or hatchling hognose snakes in the spring, which implies that these guys hatched late in the summer or maybe midsummer and didn't eat much at all, if anything, before they went down for brumation. There's a good chance that baby hognoses, or some of them, don't eat a single meal between when they hatch and when they go down for the winter in the wild. This is a really wiggly hognose snake, my goodness. This, by the way, is the beautiful condomorph hog we hatched earlier this year that has all the pretty Mickey Mouse designs down its back. However, it hasn't wanted to eat anything. Even toadlets I've tried doesn't want to eat anything. So there is a chance, and when you breed, you have to accept this chance with all of your baby snakes, that this could be one of those babies that just wasn't meant to survive. Like in the wild, it would just slither around aimlessly waiting to be eaten by a predator or to starve to death. But there's also a chance that he just might not want to eat until he goes through the first brumation cycle. So we're going to test it out with him and send him down into brumation, wake him up in March, and see if he wants to eat then. But hopefully this video helped you out if you are planning on breeding North American colubrids. Again, this is just one way to do it. It's what we've found works really well for all the snakes that we breed. And if you have another way to do it, or if you hear of somebody else doing it slightly differently, that's okay too. There's multiple ways to do it. Different lengths of time, different cool down methods or warm up methods. As long as it works for you, like your snakes are healthy afterwards, they wake up just fine, and they are in breeding mode uh, when you wake them up, then 
do it that way. So I hope you enjoyed today's video about brumation. As always, we'd like to thank our Patreon backers for supporting this channel. We love all you guys. We love everyone for watching this video. We do plan on coming out with other breeding tip videos or basically just videos about the entire breeding process. And we'll probably film that as we go along that process ourselves. Like right now we're putting our snakes down into brumation so we figured we'd make a video about it. But you can expect more breeding videos in the future. Thanks again everybody and we'll see you next time. Oh, that's his tail. Oh, the little. Did, you, did yeah, it look funny? it's like looped around your pinky. Oh. We were packing up, and look what she decided to do. She's biting Ed! Yeah, I get love tagged. <laughs> she loves you. Yeah, it's a kiss. Yeah. yeah it's she... a smooch. <laughs> Mwah! She's really just angry that she doesn't have food. <laughs> She's pulling. <laughs> oh, what are you gonna do? Oh, go get vodka? <laughs> False alarm, she let go. Yeah, the aftermath. I guess she's showing us what she thinks about going down for brumation and not being fed for three weeks. Oh, All right, okay. I'll let you grab the snake so I don't have to get bit twice. <laughs> you don't want another bite? No, I'm good.